there are many concepts in physics and astronomy that simply don't make sense when they're described in simple terms. This is precisely why I've decided to create a new series of videos on my channel, the Explained series. In this series, we'll be breaking these concepts down into detailed and yet simplistic explanations. The shape or geometry of the universe is a topic that has been covered by several large channels. However, after scanning the comments sections of these videos, it's obvious that many people misinterpret these videos and never fully grasp the presented facts. This problem stems from the English language itself, where many words and phrases with completely different meanings are often used interchangeably, which can sometimes be a barrier to anyone that can't interpret the raw equations behind such principles. So then, here's my attempt to make sense of these messy ideas. Let's establish something. The universe as we know it is four dimensional. Three of these are spatial dimensions and one is temporal. The flow of time can be thought of as another axis, a dimension that we all move through at different angles to each other. It's important to remember that we directly exist in and experience only three spatial dimensions. A positively curved universe is also known as a spherical universe. This universe would be finite and would eventually collapse in on itself under its own weight. A spherical universe would change the way we think about the universe forever. The implications are quite mind boggling. For example, two parallel lines would eventually meet in such a universe. In the same way parallel lines eventually meet on a planet's surface, or any three-dimensional sphere. The angles inside a triangle in such a universe would be larger than 180 degrees. If you travelled in a straight line through this universe, you would eventually loop right back around to where you started, despite never changing direction. You could circumnavigate the cosmos in the same manner as circumnavigating the globe. Distant stars and galaxies in this universe would all be mere illusions, the light of the same galaxies wrapping around and around giving us the illusion of an infinite universe. If we were to find such a repeating pattern, the size of the universe would finally be uncovered. Now, there have been many claims recently that scientists now think the universe is spherical. This is completely false and I'll explain why later in the video. Now this is where everyone gets confused and starts to think that the universe must be spherical because we thought the earth was flat once, so that means the universe is obviously a sphere too, right? Not quite. This curvature doesn't imply that the universe itself is some sort of marble that we all live inside. The correct way to think about it is to remove a spatial dimension. Let's pretend we live in two dimensions of space and one dimension of time. If this two dimensional universe was spherical and we were to travel through this universe, it would be like traveling around the surface of a globe. The surface of the globe is two dimensional after all, it's flat, it has no third dimension and if you traveled in straight lines across it, you would look right back around to where you started. Okay. Now let's add the third spatial dimension back into the equation. We are now back in our own universe. In this spherical universe scenario, travelling in any direction in the universe, up, down, left, right, would be the same as travelling across the surface of a sphere. Except that this spherical universe isn't a regular 3D sphere, it's a 4 dimensional hypersphere. So instead of travelling across a 2D surface, you'd be travelling across a 3D surface. This will make a lot more sense as soon as I've explained the other possible curvatures. A 
negatively curved universe or a hyperbolic universe is a bit trickier to wrap your head around. In this universe, parallel lines would diverge away from each other and the angles inside a triangle would always be less than 180 degrees. You can think of this universe as being saddle shaped. This non-Euclidean universe is a difficult one to explain and understand, so I'll try to use the other two examples as much as possible to compensate. Remember that the shapes you're seeing on screen are only three dimensional shadows of a four dimensional shape. The mathematics behind these shapes cannot be accurately portrayed in our three dimensional universe. Remember that if we lived on the surface of a four dimensional object, that surface will be three dimensional. And if we lived in a 3D object, the surface would be two dimensional and we would be two dimensional beings. The shape on screen is what a hyperbolic universe could look like. This is also a finite universe structure and we would observe a repeating octagonal pattern of galaxies in such a universe and every point in this universe is shaped like a saddle. This is the shape of the universe we live in, or at least the most likely shape based on all of our observations. Once again, I must clarify that a flat universe doesn't mean it's two dimensional. All it means is that parallel lines never meet, the angles within a triangle always add up to 180 degrees, and the universe extends out infinitely. This doesn't mean that there are infinite versions of our planet somewhere else in the universe though, as matter can still be finite. This flat topology is probably the simplest to understand, as it means that you can travel in any direction indefinitely. Now you can have a finite flat universe, I'll explain in a moment. If you can wrap your head around the fact that a flat universe isn't two dimensionally flat, then you'll probably begin to understand the other types of universe topology. Remember this 3D space we live in can be thought of as a slice of a greater 4D space, in the same way that you can slice a 3D object into a two dimensional plane. This is the universe that fits in with our current understanding of space time curvature and general relativity. This also means that our universe is practically everlasting and will not end by collapsing in on itself. The current expansion of the universe in all directions is another indicator of our universe's flatness. Now, as I said before, you can have a finite flat universe, which would be represented by shapes such as the torus or a 4D Klein bottle. But hold on. You might ask how gravity can bend space if space is flat. Well, that's the thing, gravity doesn't just bend space, it bends space-time. If we use the flat plane analogy again, we can see that gravity doesn't really bend space around massive objects, but space-time does contract around matter. So the invisible grid lines within our universe actually contract. The space itself contracts around massive objects bends into the fourth dimension, as a two-dimensional universe would bend into the third dimension. One interesting concept that stems from the flat universe is the idea of our universe having zero energy in total. This comes from the fact that the positive energy of matter and the negative energy of gravity cancel out to zero. This effectively means that our entire universe amounts to complete nothingness, and this also implies that our universe wouldn't need a cause to exist, whereas a positive curvature universe could be one of trillions in an endless cycle of expansion and collapse. In a flat universe like our own, the expansion rate slows down until it comes to a complete halt, providing we ignore dark energy. However, what we actually observe is an acceleration of the expansion of the universe due to dark energy. Okay, so we've briefly covered the basics of these universe geometries, and if you noticed earlier on, I said that our universe is most definitely flat. But how do we know? And what about that one paper that suggested it was positively curved? 
or spherical. The Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB for short, is basically the afterglow of the light from the time just after the Big Bang. This light took 13 billion years to reach us and can be used to determine the geometry of the universe to an extent. This is mainly done by measuring the light's curvature over long distances, which could absolutely help us determine the shape of the universe. Recently, the European Space Agency's Planck satellite measured the CMD and sent back readings suggesting the universe is curved. This directly contradicts our current model of the Big Bang and of the universe's entire history, as well as all prior observations. But after this initial reading, the results were checked again and have confirmed that the universe is in fact flat, as was initially thought. As cool as it would be to throw all of our working models of the universe out the window, unfortunately, extraordinary claims like the universe being curved require extraordinary evidence. And that evidence just isn't there, since the data the satellite sent back was most likely influenced by interstellar dust, curving light more than usual, and making the universe appear curved. So it most definitely is flat then. Not so fast. Despite everything else pointing to a flat universe, there is a crisis in cosmology. Three astronomers that are part of the Planck team claim to have witnessed further readings indicating that the universe is curved. However, this directly contradicts other teams of astronomers and their observations of a flat universe. But since the rest of the Planck team are still agreed that the universe is flat, and this trio only have eyewitness accounts, there is still some further digging to be done just to really destroy all doubts of the shape of our universe. And this of course will be done by using other space agencies and taking further more accurate readings, just to ensure that the universe is in fact flat. Because right now there is that small possibility of the universe being curved. It's a very, very small possibility and any readings that suggest the universe is actually curved can probably be put down to error. But we can't really be certain until we've absolutely made sure that there is nothing actually indicating that the universe is curved. Anyways, I hope this video has somewhat cleared things up, despite it being a really, really difficult concept for anyone to understand. So even if you only understood half of it, that's still an achievement. My next video will be continuing the Explain series with another interesting and yet confusing topic. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. You better subscribe. <laughs>